This video is brought to you by NCIX.com. Great technology, selection, and service. Hello everyone, I'm Dimitri with Hurricanux, and inside my workstation machine, I am running this. This is the Kraken uh, X61 from NZXT. This is an all-in-one liquid cooler. This is a 280 millimeter radiator. Now, this cooler is bundled up with the CAM software from NZXT that allows you to change the hue on the pump here, allows you to, to uh, develop different uh, fan profiles with curves for the fan speeds, depending on the temperature of the CPU, the temp depending on the temperature of the liquid. Um, but also gives you some monitoring abilities of your components and your hardware. But NZXT is rolling out with uh, CAM 2.0, a new version software that uh, brings, uh, you know, boosts a, a bunch of excellent monitoring abilities that uh, we did not see with the previous CAM version. And in this video, we'll be taking a look at that. So first, let's outline uh, what the previous or the original CAM software is like and then move on to CAM 2.0 to see exactly what type of improvements we got. All right, so here's the original CAM software. This is the version 1.2.4. Uh, the main gripe I have with this is that you cannot resize the window, so you cannot make it bigger because all these modules are pretty small. You can collapse these modules, as you can see, but that's kind of pointless. Like the specifications window, you know, you have to scroll down to see everything and going into the advanced mode, for some reason, you lose out on RAM and storage stuff. So you have to go back to the basic mode to see that. Here you can see the temperature of the CPU and the GPU, you can cycle between the easily with color-coded temperatures and you can go into Fahrenheit uh, and the load usage shows the top five load intensive applications and uh, the cam software happens to be one of the most uh, RAM heavy tasks within my application when things are not idle so it's actually consuming about 160 megabytes of RAM that is pretty high for not doing anything and the graphs that you see beside there are pretty pointless because, well, first of all, they're tiny. You can't really compare or use that information for competitive analysis. You can uh, cycle between the temporal scales, the minutes, hours, days, weeks, and months. I'm not sure why months is there, and that's a little bit too much, I think. But uh, it gives you a little bit of information on what's happening within your hardware, within your machine. These are not logged, so you cannot take this information out, you know, put it into Excel and make your own graphs and compare this information if you're doing some review on something. Uh, so this is strictly for visual aesthetics, you know, it is kind of pointless in that regard. And heading into the Kraken control panel, the most important thing here are the custom fan curves. You have the preloaded, silent, and performance mode, the custom mode where fan speed can be changed in 5% increments, and the manual mode with constant fan speed. Here you can also select LED color with breathing, blinking mode, and unfortunately user color selection does not accurately translate to desired hue on the pump. And so aside from just creating my custom fan curves uh, and just monitoring the temperature, I guess, because it is right there visually, um, I did not utilize any of the uh, other features built in, like the graphs. I never really look at them because they're pointless to me in forms of comparative analysis, and they're quite tiny. And the same thing with the specifications uh, and the notifications as well that don't really say anything or help me um, change my workflow or how I use my machine. All right, booting up CAM 2.0. Let's see what we have. So it's uh, loading pretty quickly. Unfortunately, uh, for some reason, it is no longer displayed in the notification menu. So here it is. They've done a complete redesign overhaul on the UI uh, and it looks slightly better, I think, uh, but uh, they've still stuck around with that sort of limiting window. But check this out expandable window oh yeah so in the expandable window you can go go into the advanced sort of expand that um unfortunately that's as this is as big as going to get you cannot uh expand it vertically nor horizontally you can't collapse it further but i find it kind of pointless it would be nice if you could make this in your entire window or at least Expand, uh, enlarge this window vertically so you can see all these graphs, but we'll get that in a second. So first of all, GPU, CPU temperatures and load, very useful. Um, you can go and change the mode on the crack and cooler right away uh, with a little drop down menu. So silent mode, save, and it shows you the liquid temperature, fan speed, RPM of the pump and the fans, very nice. Down here, you can collapse this advanced window. It shows you CPU, GPU, motherboard, RAM, HDD, and net. 
And you can also uh, pop this window out for a little bit of extra information on the stats for the CPU, the GPU. And that's one thing NZXT really wanted to dive down into, giving users a bit more flexibility, not the flexibility, but information on their entire system. I guess it's somewhat useful where you have the minimum and maximum and the current, which is uh, kind of nice. Uh, unfortunately, no averages, which would be really nice to see as well. And that's one thing that NZXT wants to do is they want to hear your input on the software. So if you have any suggestions on what should be included or what should be taken out out of this uh, latest CAM 2.0 release, please leave it in the comments below. Coming back to the whole uh, issue on what the original software was uh kind of lagging is the whole logging information. I want to be able to start logging, have everything input into a notepad file, and then I could later that import that into Excel to make my own graphs. Why can't I do that NZXT? Please give us this option. And I say this because these graphs are again, very pointless. Sure, you can click on them to reveal the a little bit extra. Uh, so the graphs is slightly enlarged, you can go back and kind of cool is shows you the top applications uh, for that time period, which is nice. So it's all OBS for <laughs> for right now as I'm recording with OBS. You still have the temporal scales of minutes, hours and days. Finally, or thank you for removing the weeks and months. Uh, I think that was kind of pointless. But here you can see minimum and maximum. Very nice as well. CPU statistics, CPU load. CPU load, I think a little pointless. Um, shows you the five top uh, load intensive tasks at the moment. I don't like the whole idea of scrolling here. I would like to have this graph window as a, a standalone window on its own that I can resize that would be give me a little bit more flexibility knowing what information I want to receive out of these graphs and not be locked down to this tiny window that I have to actually scroll in. I'm not super happy about that. Going to the GPU, same idea. Uh, shows you the GPU temperatures and load and uh, most, uh, I guess, intensive application for that time period. Uh, motherboard, temperatures, voltages, and the fan RPM. RAM. That's kind of cool, I guess. It would be cool to see how much RAM is being utilized if I'm rendering a video, for example, and give you the load. But like I said, again, as long as you cannot log it, it's kind of useless. Hard drive activity. So uh, because I have, I believe, seven drives installed inside the system, um, I have to cycle between these arrows in order to get to my preferred uh, drive activity and I don't want to do that. I want to be able to open that as a standalone window and monitor each single hard drive based on whatever I'm doing. If I'm doing any testing or seeing what type of load is being processed or being uh, handled by certain drive because I have certain drives as cache drives and going back to the net. Well, there you go. Uh, again, giving you download upload speeds on a temporal basis. One thing NZXT really wanted to bring out is uh, more detailed specifications. And you can see that with this pop-out window and the advanced dashboard, where it's giving you all the information on the CPU, on the GPU. Let's scroll down here. Max CDP is zero watts. <laughs> well, I guess it hasn't really updated the information on the Titan X yet. Uh, motherboard, RAM. Uh, it's giving you timings on the RAM now, which is something that was not available in the previous version. Hard drive activity, so HDD, so I have seven. Yep. So all of them, and it's giving you free space and new space. Um, again, kind of pointless as a, as a static statistic. See what I did there? However, it would be cool if you could log it or have an actual graphical representation of that space and whatever. And top apps, CPU and RAM top apps. Uh, and one thing that uh, also Cam wa NZXT wanted to do with Cam is reduce its load intensity on RAM, and uh, looks like they've done that exactly that. Actually, let's see what's being what is it? Uh, it's occupying right now. So we are on Cam software, which is here. So it is still utilizing about 140 megabytes of RAM, which is still quite a bit. But I am running this software. I'm not really doing anything with it, so it's pretty much on idle and uh, well it is open but still 100 and close to 150 megabytes of ram still quite a lot okay so going to specifications here we have my 
my image that I've imported earlier because I have an account online and it kind of syncs that information. Uh, here we have the advanced again going back to that specification kind of showing you what you saw on this window uh, Going to the Krakens. This is what where things are nice and important However, one major gripe I have with this well first of all you still have the performance mode and the silent mode You have the manual mode which adjusts uh, the fan speed in this uh, in the in the linear format um, But if you go into custom profile, you can only adjust the fans um, well, you still have, you can still adjust them in five percent increments, but you can only adjust them up to fifty-five degrees Celsius on the temperature. So you cannot manually adjust the CPU, the fan speed, if your CPU is above fifty-five degrees, which I think is limiting, um, because uh, above fifty-five degrees, it automatically boosts uh, the fans to one hundred percent. Um, my CPU right now is hovering around 50 degrees Celsius on idle. So whenever I'm rendering something and my CPU goes over 60 degrees Celsius, my fans automatically start to ramp up to 100%. That's not okay. I want to have the flexibility to have to adjust my fan speed all the way up to 100% uh, for that extra because it's a custom profile. Let me do my custom profile in ZXT. So I just kind of leave it in silent mode, which uh, looks like here it goes up to about, see that's one thing, you don't have the precise measurements within percentages, and that's kind of annoying, but it goes up to, I think this would be 70% um, fan speed, whatever, yeah, 70% fan speed and liquid temperature, so it looks like the silent profile it gives you a little bit more of a curve, to accommodate for high temperatures while reducing the fan speed. And you can save the changes here. Uh, here you can change the color of the hue. No longer do you get that nice uh, gradient uh, uh, customization, but you can go to here and choose the different color. And I actually found out that the color accuracy based on what you select in the software and based on what pops up on the actual pump is very accurate. So the color that you see on the screen now is the exactly the same color that is being right now showcased on the pump. You can go into alternating, which uh, will cycle between the standard and the alternating color within the interval that is being specified up to 10 seconds. You can set to blinking LED. Blinking LED is really kind of useless. It just goes back and forth. There's no gradient and you can also turn it off. Um, and the last thing is the settings. So you can manage your account online because everything is synced up. You now have an Android app where you can view all these specifications for, through your smartphone. Going to the cam software, you can actually change the image of the UI. So everything that you see here right now can be changed to give you uh, recommended dimensions for that image and maximum file size, whatever. Change your English, uh, change your language. Uh, inter interface accent color, so I have it in orange because I think that complements the blue very well But you can see if I change it to green and I save changes You can see exactly what uh, aspects of the UI are changed in change of color, and I think that's very nice uh, You can all start cam and start minimized and Notifications this is where you can have a cam notify you with a pop-up whenever things hit a certain temperature you can disable notifications. I think this is useful, um, especially because you have the flexibility and adjusting the dials for those temperatures. And overlay. This is cool because now you get overlay through cam that you can disable and enable at the same time with uh, FPS, average FPS, resolution, memory, CPU, GPU, and effects. Effects is VSync uh, and MSAA, things like that, that can be enabled to, uh, so they're visually on the visible on the on the on the screen. You can change the color of the text. I kept the yellow because it's the most visible right now. You can change the font type. Um, you can change the font even, and then scale font with resolution, which is very nice, and change the position of that overlay. So going back into the dashboard, I think what they've done here is an improvement over what was available before. It is a complete UI overhaul, and I like the direction they've gone. Um, now, no longer though, you can select Fahrenheit temperature, something that you were able to change within the previous version of Cam. You can still access all the fan profiles and fan curves, and especially in the custom profile, I don't like how you're only able to change anything up to 55 degrees Celsius on a temperature. Um, I want to have full flexibility of that, but 
it is what it is for now and this is cam 2.0 and n60 really relies on feedback from the community uh, based on you know, all the things that are being provided and one thing that i don't know if they've uh, addressed is multiple krakens in your system because that would be a very big uh thing to fix if you have multiple krakens in your system having a visual representation of whether or not you're modifying the fan curse for the your, one of your krakens versus another kraken that would be great um but for now this has uh, been cam 2.0 overview uh it just launched today so if you if you own a kraken compatible or if you want a kraken cooler uh, download the software, play around with it, let us know what you think, and leave a comment down below of what you should like to see uh, changed or modified. So thank you so much for watching this uh, brief overview, or not brief, but uh, more of a detailed overview of the software. Uh, if you'd like to see more videos like this, leave in the comment below. Thanks so much for watching, and we'll see you in the next one.